呃，这一场我们已经是上上次在美术馆跟大家介绍过了，呃，我就不再那个那个介绍他们两位了，很重要的那个韩韩国呃策展人朴先生。跟这个 Samir 是呃加拿大 Simon Fraser 的那个教授，那个正在往面外面走的那个承接人我不介绍了，大家都认识，啊，那呃 ，Johnson 跑掉了，好 ，Johnson 在，那个我开始的时候有一点点，我我我没有太多话好讲，跟大家讲一点背景。就是为什么会搞这个东西？那那个故事大概是可以这样讲的：二零一零年的时候啊，那其实是在场的那个张颂仁发起的。那我们开始推动这个所谓的西天中土计划，那其实是说利用不好听，借用吧，那个上海双年展。那那个时候，那一次双年展的策展人是那个昨天在 Skype 上面出现的那个高世明。好，那我们等于说从那个那个时候开始搭，就是这个我不知道是什么叫做叫做借他的平台做不同的事情，所以有这样子的一个脉络。当然有一个方面是因为高世明，所以我们三个人在合作开始推这个计划。那这个计划基本上是在做那个硬硬中的交流，啊，所以中间有一部分是包括这个展演的，可是那个展演的方式有一部分就是刚才陈汉或者说其他大概这个也不新鲜，就拉到别的地方去做。那这个应该是在那个人民公园上海人民公园旁边。的那个等于说那条路叫什么？啊，南京西路，这在南京西路的那个走廊里面做的这个这个展览，啊，那这个左手边这边应该是那个那个那个人民公园，然后所以呃，第二个展场是在这个是白石桥旁边对不对？哦，然后旁边的这一个。教堂还是什么，我忘了，对不对？对不对？在这里面做的，所以所以这里面包括展演的部分，可是拉出来的那个所谓传统认知的艺术以外的，啊，这里面是那个一个重要的印印度的艺术家在那个展演场里面的作品，那其实是在其实推动是利用这个双年展的平台在推这个社会思想的对话。那中间包括那个刚才讲的，其实我们出了很多他的那个读本，啊，包括那个演讲，我大概讲一讲他的这个这个操作的形式。那呃，大概 spread out， 把他那个基本上的活动拉开来，大那个两三个月的之间，然后每一次进来一个讲者，一个思想者。然后他的方式是其实是很深入的对话，所以是说慢速度也不对，可是不是加速度，那基本上是早上，举例来讲，在周末在上海上海美术馆，那那个空间其实变成某一种市民空间，呃，人进来的进进出出的很复杂，那其实也后来慢慢训练出来了，不是训练，就是很多人哎觉得好像有意思，就慢慢都都来。我还记得有很多那个退休的人跑来，然后话很都都有话讲，那讲啊文革讲什么这些东西，所以是在一个等于说美术馆拉出来的，跟我们感觉那个台北美术馆不太一样。台北美美术馆好像去的会是某一些固定的一些人，啊，人长得都可以看出来是去美术馆的这种人，那在上海那个不太一样。那所以基本上是上午呢，让那个讲者有足够的两个多小时的时间，可以把他要讲的东西讲完，然后下午找来不同的这个那个朋友，两岸三地的，包括韩国的、新加坡的一些朋友来，跟他们讨论跟对话，那个是中间的一场。那另外一场就拉到那个附近的那个后来称之为在大陆叫做高校
，高校就是大学里面那个跟跟那个不同的老师和同学们对话，是在那个样的一个形式里面进行的。呃，所以那个那个这个这个网上面用西天 West Heaven Google 很容易找到。我只是担心，其实有一些朋友们不太知道这个，大致上讲一下这个他的那个对话形式。然后最后我们大概是去年还今年出了这本，等于说是这个整个对话的那个那个集子跟那些文章吧，啊，这个是二零一零年开始启动的，但是这个东西不止于在美术馆内部的活动或者是双年展的，那用双年展来启动了这个这个计划，然后接下来那个也启动了这个 same thing。啊，孟买就是上孟买跟上海的那个那个都市计划，我有很多故事可以讲，我不讲了。为什么叫 same thing？ <咳>然后也有这个艺术家，那个从印度的到到上海，从上海的到到从那个印度去，包括呢在会在座的那个惠华去过，对不对？这一些和那个 Jeff 他们他们去，对，没有他有去过，他当初有有有去过的。呃，借人好像参加那个对话的那个部分，那所以那个东西是放在社社会思想对话的部分，所以参与的人远远溢出于艺术界。那其实我们后来发现，在上海美术馆，每一次的时候，很多艺术家在场听。那我等一下也许会请那个吴志浩江省有那个张颂仁有没有要补充的，就是他有他的那个动力，希望能够把印度思想。也可以带到这个中文的语境里面，造成一些刺激跟对话，啊。那二零，刚是二零一零年启动的，二零一一年那个继续在推的一种方式，就是透过用电影为媒介，然后可以形成社会思想对话，也就是所以也跟这个广州三年展里面中间有一些合作。那其实这一年主要在推的就是我们的这个那个朋友啊，西，呃，搞了这个影展，你不属于印度电影的过去与未来。那这个开始以前就他负责编了这个有一个电影的读本在那里出现，然后这个是在北京的那个呃影展开始以前的新书发表会，然后这个是在尤伦呃伊比利亚的那个开幕。然后从北京去了广州，啊，那个有影展有讨论，然后去了昆明，啊，这也有很多故事，这也是一个那个很有趣的一个一个一个空间，然后去了上海，啊，那从上海，哎，王莫林跑掉了，那边有他朋友，那个。然后来去了香港，和在那个台湾在交通大学的那个电影中心里面做了这个巡回。呃，这个是二零呃到这个地方的时候已经二零一二年了。然后那个艺术家的那个派遣这个这个展览这些东西还在持续。那这一个西天中土计划本身一直到现在还在继续进行。那真的在执行负责执行的这个人是后面那个陈韵站在后面。哦，那呃，接下来到了二零一二年的时候，我们原来就希望能够把这一个印中思想的对话可以打开来，就是超过印度和中国的中国大陆啊、哦，中国没有两岸三地，大概都在里面，能够把它打开来变成是一个那个呃亚洲现代思想界的一个对话。那这是二零一二年，那运气也比较好。那一年是邱世杰在做那个策展人，所以所有的这一些活动的进行，从高市民，高我还记得那个那一次，结果印中的那个策展在外面，把那个上海那个双年展本身在馆内策展的那些那个东西都抢掉了。我是说报道，不过还好他也是这个这个策展里面的一部分，所以他也没太在意。好像有一些，这就是有复杂的一些机构合作的这些问题。那这个东西也是跟双年展、上海双年展合作的
，那这个整个，这个这个活动搞得很复杂，因为要怎么样能够让这个这个亚洲的思想界对话可以发生，可是又不是很肤浅的发生，那又有前面的包袱。啊，我说包袱是说，我们原来前面在做的时候是一个思想者进来让他讲一天，啊，那所以这一个活动后来想了半天，我记得好像是贺兆田的建议，变成是主要的那个讲者前面跟后面，呃，就是一直这样进来，可是在中中间汇聚汇汇汇聚，所以总共拉开来将近十天到两个礼拜，然后每天搞，所以弄到后来大家已经快死了。那一按照原来的方式，一天有一个讲，可是中间的那一天，我已经忘了是哪一天了，十十五号好像，变成是那个所有人聚集在一起，是这样子的方式来进行的。那有一些人认识那个白乐琴先生，那个等等啊，大概的状况是那样。那这个左上角那个。是张承志，有一些人认识他，在这个也拉出去，在上海旁边的那个叫什么美术馆又忘了，啊，外滩外滩美术馆，因为很多的原因，所以张把张承志拉去跟板垣雄三先生在那里对话，呃，所以这一个大概是在那一个活动的汇聚的那一天哦，那个那个聚集起来的，然后在那里面我们大概就哎呦看不到了。推了那个亚洲现代思想计划，那就把将近九个不同的地方的办公室能够搭起来，能够串起来，有有就是说有在地的合作，啊，然后有一些翻译计划在进行，有一些青年论坛在进行，然后有不同的那个那个活动在在推出，可是也有一些共同的活动，我只讲一点点，因为东西后来卷的太多了。呃，这个是二零一三年在冲绳，啊，第一次我们在做的就是那个亚洲现代思想计划的年度讲座，然后白先生的那个中文翻译的那个行人马上会出来，那个翻译有一些耽搁，啊，那还有一些计划在那个出版计划已经出来的，包括那个台湾的人间思想刊物跟大陆马上。呃，那个贺兆田跟高世明负责主编的，大概马上也要有那简体字版的东西要出来，啊，那其实还有一些书在日本翻译的、韩国翻译的，大概都已经在进行的。那这个是那个是那个去年的，那今年的大概活动的有一个比较大的，就是二零一四年有一些同学参加了这个在场同学。那那个是用叫做亚洲现代思想导论的课程，跟原来的雅纪文化研究的网络合作的，推了这个暑期班的活动，也是两个礼拜的。然后最后那个活动的时候是请今年的亚洲现代思想计划的那个年度讲座是请阿西斯南迪，那个他的出版已经也是行人跟我们合作出的，那是在。大概我要我要讲的那个那个过程大概就是这样子的了，那所以我们企图想要，呃，在这样子的结构底下，要怎么样去借着双年展，能够做其他的事情，啊、哦，那所以也就是说，除了批判他以外，因为你知道他在跑。那我们要做的事情，如何可以借着它能够像有更大范围的那个，不只是能见度也好，或者影响力，或者是让大家我讲的互看的意思是说，不是说到了美术馆内，大家看到那个哦，今天有到处来的这些那个那个艺术家的展出，而且包括有一些活动在会场外，啊，包括跟别的地方的串联，所以我们其实这一次今年本来想要。把不同的一些双年展可以，可以跟这些双年展合作。那有我们有些那个动作太慢，那最起码那个台北这个合作到了，跟光州的也在合作，可是那个时钟时间有点晚，可他们也希望能够合作。接下来好要到马上要到印度，跟印度的那个三年展合作的样子，所以是希望透过这个东西。那我们其实今天这个场合是因为有很多的那个。朋友，那
内部外部进来了，我们就希望好像说能够创造一个机会，大家能够讨论说啊，那双年展还有一些什么其他的可能性，不只是我们在做的事情，那也许其他的事情还可能发生，所以他有一个这样子的一个一个双年展结构的想象。啊，所以不只是台台北、上海、光州、福冈、新加坡等等等等这些地方，那怎么样能够产生更为有呃有深度的一些互动吧？大概是大概是这样子的一个一个意义底下的。呃，我我的报告大概就是到这样子了。那那个呃那个 Johnson， 你有没有要补充的？呃，刚才呃上半场的有个讲者谈到呃，双年呃双年展作为一个感性生产这个说法，我觉得也蛮合我们在做这个活动的，因为思想啊，呃应该还是有血有血有肉的，在一个论坛上头大家出现，还有在一个有呃标榜要要制造感性生产的地点出现的话，就把自私降落到一个呃一个情景里面，还有这个情景。呃，是一个比较呃比较松的，呃比较做做种做种一种一种感觉的那个一种一种场合。那么呃七天中途开始呢，跟印度交流呃还还是有目的性，因为中国跟印呃印度交流的比较比较少，呃尤其是中国大陆呢呃对印度学者更有比台湾更有抗拒，因为在台湾大家对呃后殖民思想。呃呃，书读的比较多，八十年代开始大家就留意。那么，在大陆呢，基本上对这块学问是抗拒的。大家认为这个跟我们没关系，我们没有给殖民，因为中国没给外国统治。呃，那我们呢，呃，也自己革命了，我们呃自己主动的去呃进入了一个现代领域，我们有自己的一个路子。可是恰恰就这样，呃，我们现在今天看了中国。要你要走非常远的路，才看到一点点中国，因为我们是彻底给殖民了，所以为什么有这种现象？那我觉得要把现在的中国那种在文化上给殖民的状态拉出来，只有找现在呃对后殖民理论比较正更最能够参照的，也跟我们最接近的一个地方的知识分子来交流。那么所以呃，通过光兴的关系，我们请来的有一半是。呃，社会思想界的也有好几个，其实是呃跟艺术界有关系的，包括印度最重要的美术评论家，也也有一两个很重要的策展人这样。那么，嗯，大概是这样。所以，要是在台北双展呃落实一些思想论坛，我我觉得也是，就是怎么样把思想再变得更有血有肉的一个一个事情。那那个我们的说明到此结束，然后接下来呢？我们就请那个那个等于说预设的庄脚，请他们来先引言，那个然后再请大家来讨论。所以先请那个 Samuel， please。Yes, well, thank you very much.、Um, in the interests of uh, permitting uh, uh, a larger discussion, which I think is really key here. In this context,、uh, I, I'll try not to take too long.、Um, I'll just have a few things that uh, I'll um, I'll outline, and、um, uh, then perhaps、uh, after Professor Park's discussion, we can、uh, ha have a larger、um, discussion within within the the room、uh, involving the floor.、Um, I just want to preface my my remarks by saying that I I was really first approaching、um, this、uh, topic. Uh, from the standpoint of、um, uh, a, a professor,、um, somebody who teaches in, in, in a department of humanities in a、uh, um, uh, university in in Vancouver, but、um, I also started thinking just on the way over here that I'm also the, the director of the Institute、um, for the Humanities, which really has um, its um, its mission to engage the public in in、um, in some way. And so I think from from that particular standpoint,、um, uh, there are、um, perhaps some 
uh, some overlaps and some problematics that are shared in common with, with uh, uh, Biennale as a, as a platform. Because the Biennale also must really try to engage with the, with the public, whatever that is. Um, I think that also has to, to be um, further defined. Um, but the specificity of my institute is that it is um, an institute attached with Simon Fraser University, the university where I teach. But it's also located in probably the poorest neighborhood in, um, uh, in Canada. And one of the poorest neighborhoods, therefore, in North America. Uh, it's the downtown east side. Um, there are um, uh, uh, growing um, uh, problems of homelessness and destitution, poverty, and a lot of these problems affect um, uh, Aboriginal people, First Nations people, as we call them, in um, uh, in Vancouver, in, in in the very neighborhood where the university is based. So right there in a kind of microcosm, we have a question of how to address uh, a public that isn't a homogeneous public, but a very diverse public. Um, and one that's diverse in ways that I think were, were alluded to in the first panel, in that the very ideas uh, of, um, uh, of time, uh, of place, of locality, of, of territory, um, are quite different. Um, so the university, as a bearer of the universal, has to in some way address uh, the uh, particularity of the particular. So this is a great challenge for us, and, and we struggle to, to engage with this challenge. I'm not sure that we're always successful, but we are really learning. So it's a process of, uh, of ongoing learning. And I think that's, um, that's really key. So one aspect of um, this learning process is, of course, introducing our events with an acknowledgement that uh, we are on land that has been unseated by these First Nations communities. Right? Um, and this is an important reference of the universal, the university, to the particular locality in which the universal the university is situated. So in some way, these frame my thoughts in terms of thinking about um, the Biennale as platform. Um, and I hope it, um, this uh, slight background will um, en enable my thoughts to make some sense to, to all of you. And of course, uh, I'd be happy to try and clarify uh, them if, 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 um, if they don't. So uh, I'll just turn now to the more or less prepared notes that I have for, uh, for my presentation. Um, and so the first thing that I would say is that I feel a little bit, um, uh, I feel that this assignment was a bit of a challenge for me because in my uh, professional work, I, I don't have the opportunity to think so much about the Biennale as form, as platform. Uh, it's something I've only just started to think about. So it's, um, it's a challenge for me. Um, I've learned a, a, a tremendous amount already in just hearing the presentations earlier today. The discussions um, with colleagues and friends uh, on Friday was very interesting and also informed some of my, my comments. Um, I do feel that if there is a Biennale in which to start to think about the question of the Biennale as platform, this is it. I mean, I'm not saying that just as a pro forma thing. I'm not just um, making a, a, a kind of a virtue out of a necessity. I, th I think because of the way this uh, Biennale has been curated, its theme, and then also, uh, let's say, how it has um, or has not lived up to its intentions can provide us with some opportunity for, uh, for reflection. Um, so. I start really by posing a question, and that is, to what extent can the Biennale as an idea be really understood in um, uh, Hegelian terms as the manifestation of spirit? Right? And we've already spoken a lot about ghosts, and the idea of spirit is a kind of ghost. Right? Geist in the German means both spirit and ghost. So in a way, we're haunted by Hegel, by Hegel's spirit. Well, well, why? This is a very odd place to start, isn't it? This is a 19th century European thinker, a German, 
why would we start there in this context? Um, I think there are some very good reasons for that, um, and it has uh, something to do with what I referred to earlier in my question um, to the students, and that is Hegel was really the first thinker who, who wanted to um, pose the question about the possibility of a universal history, right? Universal history, a, a conception of time that was itself universal and that all societies and communities shared in one way or another. So I think that, that is um, one reason um, for starting there. Of course, a, a counter response would um, immediately be, uh, well, Hegel thought that uh, art had come to its end, right? Art was superseded by religion and philosophy as a bearer of the absolute, and I would definitely take that in into account. However, the r relationship between concepts of freedom, of reason, um, uh, and so on are very much for Hegel located in institutions like the, s the modern state, the archive, the museum, all of this constellation of institutions becomes a bearer of reason, of freedom, of universal history, which we have to always remember was a very Eurocentric understanding of history, right? Um, uh, history pr progresses through the Greek world, through the Roman world, into the modern European world. It's a, it's a, a, a Eurocentric uh, narrative that Hegel is telling. So uh, this is an important place to start because you could say that despite um, the various attempts within globalization, within postmodernism, to decenter Eurocentrism, uh, we are still struggling with its ghost. So we're, st so, so, so we're still uh, struggling with the ghost of Hegel in this sense, right? The ghost of a universalist uh, narrative of progress. And um, my view would be that the idea of the Biennale is a successor to the notion of the, um, the, world's, uh, the, the world exposition, the expo, uh, which has its origins in the 19th century. I think the very important one is the uh, Crystal Palace exhibition um, of, of 1851. And this really consolidates the notion of this global spectacle or world, it wouldn't be global so much as a world spectacle with colonialism and a certain kind of understanding of Western European dominance. So again, this is the spirit that has to be um, contended with in any Biennale, even in today's world, right? We have to confront this. Um, and this is, uh, as Lu Xinghua pointed out, a slightly um, longer historical frame that we need to always reference and, and bring into, uh, into our uh, discussion. So I think then if, if we accept the premise for the moment that um, the Biennale can be understood in terms of this notion of spirit, then we have the idea that the, um, the Biennale is characterized by its historicism, again, notion of historical progress, right? Um, notion of, of reason, and a notion of concrete universality. And let me just talk about each one uh, a little bit in turn, and then I will come to my, my conclusion. Um, so historicism, um, is manifest, mas manifested in terms uh, of the realization of the way in which the development of capitalist forces of production globally amounts to a kind of natural force that has altered nature itself and constitutes a qualitative shift in geological ages. So the arrival of, of what's being called the Anthropocene. So I'm talking about the Hegelian idea of spirit now as it affects our discussion. Right, so the idea of the Anthropocene. Second is reason. Right? Reason consists not just in terms of a kind of rationality, what, what you could call instrumental rationality. Um, if X, then Y. If I need to get to the store most uh, efficiently, then I take Y path. Um, but rather, reason aspires to a grasp of the whole. Right? The whole is true in Hegel's view. In order to um, uh, grasp truth, we must use reason in order to grasp the whole. Right? The, the, the whole is true. Um, so in this regard, we could say 
that what the uh, Biennale here aims at, um, uh, at least posing as a question, is um, the totality of the impact of human activities globally on the, the ecological system. The third idea is concrete universality. Um, just gonna, it, it would seem that for this, the structure of the, the um, for the Biennale as such, this is of crucial importance. The idea of concrete universality. This is absolutely central, I think, and this is where the problems emerge in, in clearest form for the specific form of the Biennale as platform. That in addressing both history and reason, the Biennale must do so in terms of achieving a synthesis um, of the universal and the particular, the cosmopolitan and the local. Right? There has to be some synthesis achieved especially after the, the postmodern turn, after the period of, of decolonization, um, this is more important than ever, achieving this. Okay? And I think in these discussions that we had on Friday, this was, the, I think, a key theme that emerged, right? Is that relationship. Um, and I think that the very excellent papers that were presented by the students were, were dealing with this in, in different ways, in interesting uh, and important ways. Um, so attempts to talk about the equalization of guilt, unresolved colonial issues, um, colonizing gestures, self-contradictory re-anthropomorphism. I'm just drawing ideas out of the papers that I read uh, of, of the students. So these are the, the kinds of issues that are being, being addressed. Um, to that we could add the, 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 the curator's lack of time for proper informed discussions with local artists and critics and students and professors. That's also part of this. So these criticisms, and I, I won't go on too much longer, um, but these criticisms suggest a, a kind of disconnect or a lack of proper mediation, uh, Hegelian term, mediation, which means relationality uh, between these universal moment, this universal moment and the particular moments. If we accept the Hegelian account of the Biennale that I'm trying to suggest here, then we could say um, that it's possible to make an imminent or internal critique of the way in which the Biennale fails on its own terms to be concrete uh, or perhaps concrete enough. Right? So this, this is the key place where I, I put some pressure on the Biennale is to say it aspires to be a concrete universal but somehow it's, it, it, it's not succeeding in this. Okay. Um, so perhaps, uh, you know, the thought is perhaps a, a Biennale, no matter how well curated, no matter how many important discussions that are had in, in uh, the run-up to the Biennale and its planning and curatorial um, uh, uh, process, um, it can never be concrete enough, which is to say um, recognize and respect the particularity of the particular that it claims to mediate. Right? This is always going to be a gap here. Okay, let's, let's hold on to that, that thought. So to what I've just said, I would add um, uh, two things. And, and also I want to bear in mind uh, something very important that Lu Xingwa had said, um, that when you give a Biennale, a theme, a title, a name, whatever it is, you're already, always already, going to create a kind of framework through which objects must, in a sense, conform. There's a kind of disciplinary dimension to such a framing, and it's, it could be viewed as a kind of violence. So that has to be, um, that has to be thought through. And I think it's especially in the case of this Biennale in particular that deals with the Anthropocene, deals with acceleration. Um, this issue of framing and a kind of violence done to things by that framing has to really be thought through a little bit more. Otherwise, the Biennale will undermine its own intentions before it even gets off the ground. Right? Because one could argue the violence done to things is a violence of subsumption. 
right? Subsuming particulars under more universal concepts, there's a kind of violence done there. Uh, and that is really, one could argue, constitutive of the Anthropocene, if we accept such a, ter uh, such a concept, right? That the logic of subsumption is part of the problem. If a Biennale doesn't reflect on the logic of subsumption that exists within it, it's not, it's not helping us move in a, in a different direction. It's not helping a, a process of reversal, uh, as was said earlier. So the second point, and a more charitable point, let's say, um, is that um, given that, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you're accepting this Hegelian logic. You may well say, no, I don't accept that at all. But if, if you accept the logic of the concrete universal within the Biennale, um, there is, in, in a way, no, no way, uh, no easy way beyond this opposition and tension between the particular and the universal. So, how can future Biennales make that into productive tension? Right? How can there be a productive tension there that's reflected upon as opposed to just maybe left to one side? or maybe left for us to discuss in context like this. Thank you very much. Shay Shay.